2,300 horsepower, the new world record for production cars, according to Koenigsegg, who simply doesn't disappoint. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're covering the Koenigsegg Gamera, which has just been revealed in its final production form and the stats are simply mind-bending. While there's still a three-cylinder option offered, a potent 2.0 liter with 600 horsepower and 600 newton meters of torque, they're also now offering the option of a 5 liter twin turbo V8, pulled from the Jesco with some alterations, which boasts 1500 horsepower and 1500 newton meters of torque. Whichever engine you pick, it's paired with Koenigsegg's new dark matter electric motor. This six-phase, so-called Raxial Flux motor packs 800 horsepower and 1250 newton meters of torque from just a 39 kilogram package. With the V8, this means a bonkers 2300 horsepower combined and an absolutely stupid 2750 newton meters of torque. To put this in perspective, that's the equivalent torque of nearly two Ford F450 Super Duty trucks with 6.7 liter turbo diesel engines in a car that weighs less than half of a single F450. Okay, but the excitement doesn't end there. Christian von Koenigsegg said something very interesting during the Gamera presentation, which I'll quote. The car is capable of running in e-motor mode on all four wheels simultaneously, or on the front axle, or on the rear axle with full torque vectoring. The same goes for the TFG. You can run it directly on the rear axle through its transmission and also on the front axle or in combination with the dark matter. It's all about which driving mode you're in. So how in the world is all of that possible? Well, a patent published by Koenigsegg in April 2023 can lend us some insight into this design. Now, within the patent, Koenigsegg describes three different powertrains. We're going to look at just one of them here that most closely resembles what is found in the Gamera. So here we have our V8 engine, and in order to connect that to the rear wheels, there is a clutch connecting it to the transmission, then sending that power to the rear wheels. There is also a prop shaft coming from the engine, leading to a clutch connecting it to an electric motor, and that electric motor is then sending power through the front differential and on either side of that front differential you have a clutch pack. So this is how the torque vectoring is going to be achieved at each corner and so essentially if we're going to take a closer look at what's going on inside of this front differential you have your output shaft coming from the electric motor that is then spinning this shaft right here and on either side you have a clutch pack and so you can lock up the clutch pack or have a varying degree of how much pressure you're going to apply to that clutch pack in order to send torque to either the right wheel or the left wheel. If you lock up this one, you send all the torque to the right wheel with leaving that one open. If you lock that up and open up this, you send all the torque to the left wheel. And then you can vary that, how much pressure you have with each clutch pack in order to determine how much torque is going to either wheel. All right, so Koenigsegg said that it's all about which driving mode you're in. So what does this patent tell us about the different driving modes? Okay, so the first thing we need to do is start up our engine. So we're gonna have these front clutches open, this rear clutch open, we're going to engage this clutch right here, connecting the electric motor to the engine, and then use that electric motor to spin up the engine and get it started. Then we can switch over to rear wheel drive combustion mode. So we're gonna disconnect this clutch right here. We're not using our electric motor. Our engine is then going to be connected through the gearbox with this clutch right here, which will be engaged. And now we're sending power to the rear wheels. Now, if we want to use the electric motor for assistance for those rear wheels, we can. We simply engage this clutch right here, we're leaving these open, and we're using the electric motor to assist the engine, sending power through that rear gearbox to the rear wheels. Now, we can also drive with all-wheel drive. So we're gonna open up this clutch right here, we're going to engage these two right here, and so we've got our engine driving our rear wheels, and then we've got our electric motor driving the front wheels. Then we can drive an electric front wheel drive. So we're going to turn off our engine, open up this clutch right here. We're going to have this clutch open right here and we're simply going to engage these front clutches so that we can use the electric motor to send power just to the front wheels, driving electric only. 
Now, you can also drive in a mode that allows you to charge up that battery. So for charge mode, there's multiple ways of doing this, but essentially you're going to have your engine connected to your electric motor using this clutch right here, and you could be in neutral, meaning all you're doing is using the engine to spin up this motor and then send that power to the battery pack, or you could also engage this clutch right here, meaning you're driving in rear wheel drive mode, but also sending some power to this electric motor so that not only are you driving the car, but you're also charging up the battery. Then you have regen mode, and again, this can be done with multiple different modes, but essentially what you're doing is you're gonna engage these front clutches, you're gonna use that energy and slow down the car using this electric motor and send that power to a battery pack. And then finally, we have what I am going to call nope mode. And this is where you engage all of the clutches fully. So they're all locked up and this really won't work. So there's one specific driving scenario in which it's theoretically possible for it to work. So we'll go through that. Basically, if your front tire circumference matched with this gear ratio is equal to your rear tire circumference matched with your rear axle gear ratio, well, then it is possible that if you're traveling in a straight line, all of these wheels are rotating at the same speed and moving the same distance. So that means your engine and motor are rotating together and everything is in unison as you're going in that straight line. But the second you start to turn, well, the front axle is going to be rotating at a different speed than the rear axle. It doesn't like that. There's going to be binding happening somewhere in the system. Now, you could have that handled with a clutch slipping somewhere or in multiple locations, uh, but essentially you're not going to be doing that uh, unless you do use something like clutch slip and you have some kind of torque pulling in one direction or the other as a result of that. Now, one interesting thing to note is that the dark matter electric motor, the tiny friendly giant, and the HV eight all have the exact same red line of 8,500 RPM. So maybe there is something going on where they are allowing these things to match up in speeds. Worth mentioning also, and what is likely the case for the Gamera as this pattern describes, you probably have a different gear ratio for this front axle, which limits the top speed of this electric motor. Meaning at a certain point, I'm just gonna make up a number and say like 200, and let's say the car gets to 250 miles per hour, at a certain speed you're gonna disconnect this front electric motor because the gearing would force it to spin too fast. Now, this patent here is very different from the Gamera that was announced in 2020. So let's talk about some of those differences and how it's different from what we've been revealed with today. So in 2020, this was quite a different concept. We had our tiny friendly giant, that three cylinder engine in the back, but it was only sending power to the front wheel. So in combination with an electric motor, then going through a torque converter, there was no transmission in the initial version that was announced, no transmission all single speed so it was a very different concept overall sending that power to the front axle and then having independent electric motors for each rear wheel so that's how you handled the torque vectoring then quite a different concept now, one of the interesting things to note is this version actually had more power than the version announced today if you're going with that three-cylinder engine. 1,700 horsepower versus just 1,400 horsepower today with the TFG thanks to just having one electric motor rather than three. Also, it had more torque than even the V8 version today. So 3,500 newton meters versus today we're looking at 2750 for the V8 matched with the dark matter motor. Now, this is slightly deceiving because this number is coming from using a torque converter and having torque multiplication within it, but also you do have three electric motors which have an abundance of torque. So very torquey, uh, but that said, because you didn't have a transmission, you know that engine's not always gonna be in the right spot to make that power. So with this version, um, they're saying, you know, this is gonna be significantly quicker, better acceleration, even though you have that power deficit with the TFG. And of course, 2,300 horsepower, horsepower is what really matters, versus 1,700 uh, is going to be significantly quicker with the V8. All right, so then we get to the version of the Gamera which we have today. And so this layout here is not exact or definite, but it is based on a combination of the images that Koenigsegg has shared, as well as this patent which helps describe how the system works. So the big changes being we now have a V8 as an option. We now have a new version of the light speed transmission, the LSTT, uh, which is describing that extra T is about the added mechanism in which this transmission is now wrapped around the 
engine in order to send power to the rear wheels. And of course we have just a single electric motor now rather than three. It is a larger, the dark matter, a larger version of the cork motor uh, which they have previously made. So with this you can have your electric front wheel drive mode only. You just ignore the rest, the electric motor powering the front using the battery. You could use that electric motor and send that power to the rear wheels and have electric rear wheel drive. You could use that electric motor, disconnect your engine here and power all four wheels. With the combustion engine, similar story. So you could use the combustion engine, send that power just to the front. You could send that power to the rear wheels or you could use that electric motor to assist in sending that power to the rear wheels. Now, the interesting thing here to me, having them introduce this V8 as an option is it's like, Look, if you're going to spend millions of dollars on a car, you're probably not going to choose the three cylinder option over the V8 option. So to me, this is like, is this a way, here's my little conspiracy brain working, is this a way that they're just trying to eliminate the TFG? Just kind of get rid of it as a concept and say like, look, there's this other engine which makes 900 more horsepower combined, why wouldn't you want that? I mean, you're already spending millions, right? So it's like, the Tiny Friendly Giant is a really, really cool engine and there's some really neat engineering that goes into it, but this seems to kind of just kill it off because it's like, why would you possibly pick it uh, over the V8? And then of course, just looking at this here, um, I've drawn in these clutches right here. This is based on the image. So if you look at the front, you can see the front clutches. And then if you look towards the rear, it looks like a very similar mechanism, very similar component uh, there in the rear on the sides of the light speed transmission where you have those additional clutches. And so you can use these clutches as I described earlier in sending power and sending that torque wherever you want. That's how the torque vectoring works. Now it wouldn't be engineering explained without a little pointless math. So let's talk about the question, how long do you actually have electric boost? So if you have 2300 horsepower, but 800 of that comes from an electric motor, how much time do you actually have from that electric motor to apply that power? And so if we have a 14 kilowatt hour battery, which this vehicle has, and an 800 horsepower motor, about 600 kilowatts, well, you take 14 kilowatt hours, you divide that by 600 kilowatts, power of your motor, and that gives you just point zero two three hours or about 84 seconds of electric boost. Now you might read that number and think what only 84 seconds of electric boost. That's terrible. Now, wait a minute. Stop. There's a reason why this is a silly question here because how long can you actually apply 2300 horsepower? Imagine driving in a straight line for 84 seconds, applying 2300 horsepower. You've gone so absurdly fast by that point. You've gone so absurdly far, there's just not a real world scenario where this is going to happen. Maybe there's some extremely long salt flats somewhere in the world where it's possible, uh, but honestly, I doubt it. I don't think it's possible to apply 2300 horsepower for 84 seconds. Uh, you know, it's just not, it's not feasible. So anytime you let off the throttle, anytime you let off or you're braking, you're using regen, anytime you're not full throttle, you can be charging that electric motor. So 84 seconds is plenty of time. And another analogy for why this is kind of a silly question is think about, hey, how long can you drive this combustion vehicle with 1500 horsepower? Well, we have a 115 liter fuel tank, about 30 gallons. Each gallon has the equivalent energy of about 33.7 kilowatt hours. That means we have a fuel tank holding about a thousand kilowatt hours of energy. Now let's be generous and say that our combustion engine here, while you know producing 1500 horsepower, is operating at 25% efficiency. Well, we multiply that by a thousand and we get just 250 kilowatt hours of available energy. We have 1500 horsepower, about 1100 kilowatts. 250 divided by 1100, that gives us just 0.23 hours of full power or about 14 minutes. Now, would you ever say that this vehicle can only drive for 14 minutes when it has a 30 gallon fuel tank? I mean, realistically, this thing's range is probably over 600 miles. It'll drive all day long. Um, so realistically, you're not gonna have to worry about running out of electric boost because you have such a massive battery pack and then you can regen and use the combustion 
an engine to charge up that battery. So realistically, if you need 2300 horsepower, whenever you put your foot down, it's going to be there. Now, before closing out here, if you have not yet checked out my video on how Koenigsegg's light speed transmission works or on how Koenigsegg's tiny friendly giant engine works, this is a really, really clever engine packed with cool engineering. It's worth checking out the video. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.